Hello everyone and welcome to Resonance Arcade. We're about to embark on episode 69 and technical difficulties aside, we are raring to go. My name's Chris and today I'm joined by my stupendous co-hosts, Matt and Denz. Why don't you tell everybody what's coming up, Denz? So today, well, on today's episode, in the flashback section, we'll be talking about the first-person story-based indie platformer, a story about my uncle, which sounds a little bit, mm, but um, <laughs> <laughs> parkour zombie <laughs> FPS, Dying Light, and uh, a rock hard action RPG that I'm sure everybody knows the uh, good old catchphrase of get good for, and that's Dark Souls 3. Uh, we're also going to be spaffing all over future <laughs> releases, uh, Subnautica Sub-Zero, GTFO, which is a very interesting name, and I'm I'm presume it mean it stands for what I think it stands for. Uh, can't say the word. Yeah, you know, and and Halo Reach. Well, we we can say whatever we want. It's our podcast. We can't get the get the frick out. Get the fudge <laughs> out. Oh, oh, would you? That's lovely. Thank you. <laughs> then, it, in hardware hot pants, we'll be talking about the PS4 sales performance and speculating about Google Stadia. Stadia, Stadia. Stadia. I think Stadia is the the Stadia. recommended. Best practice way of saying it's, it. Stadia sounds American, doesn't it? You know when they say router? Can you reboot oh. the router? Can can you reboot your Stadia? Like that kind of thing. I didn't buy one. <laughs> uh, be, before we get onto that, it's time for our competition. Now, we are mixing things up with the competition a little bit. This is the last one we're going to be doing, and we're going to be putting seasons together or something of this podcast. So we're going to do a 10-episode season. So bear with us. We're in episode 69, episode 70, we're going to be doing a slightly different format, and then episode 71, we're going to be restarting with this format, probably slightly tweaked, and then restart the competition. So we'll have nine episodes of competition. I did say I was going to explain that the next episode, but whatever. Um, so yeah, our competition is called, what are you selling? Changed what, it. What are you buying? buying? What? No, no, oh, I've changed it. We because... it. Oh, no, I'll have to redo the post production. <laughs> I've, I've changed it because what you're selling actually works better for the script. So we'll uh, we'll continue with that. Um, each week, one of the hosts has, has two minutes to sell a game that they've played, but the other two haven't played. Uh, we then have up to three, three questions each that we can ask, uh, and then we award points to that host. It's either one point or 0.5 points based on how much they would buy the game for, sale price or full price. Sounds easy. <laughs> Probably. But it isn't. Uh, this week, it's Matt. Uh, in fact, before we go any further, has anybody bought my game from last week, which was Deep Rock Galactic? Not yet, but I'm planning on doing so. Is um, that a hard plan? Are you definitely going to get it? It's a hard plan because I've looked at some of the screenshots. I So I said I've not seen anything like... I hadn't seen anything on it, but I'm looking back through some screenshots definitely feels familiar and it's like something that's passed in my steam library and i've gone oh maybe not this month but I, it's a definite hard buy and i will be purchasing it because oh. i think i think a couple of other people want to get it as well so Matt, it should be good i i haven't seen much on it and to be honest i'm waiting for the sale it, it ah. looks good looks good i have seen it before and you know, i've heard a little bit about it not gonna lie but i'm waiting for the sale it was one of them i bought in a bulk in a sale uh, like a bulk buy but it was one of the most expensive things even in the sale it was like 13 14 quid so uh, i'm glad i bought it though because i have got well over 14 15 quid out of it yeah just added an extra pound on that um so yeah uh, but basically the reason i asked that is because another thing we're going to do with the competition going forward is if someone actually buys it within the week of selling a game you get a bonus point yeah. So if Danny and Matt had bought it, I would get two extra bonus points. And we'll they... explain it every week so you get a yeah, get a general yeah, idea yeah. of it. But um, so yes, Matt, it's your turn this week. Let me it's get the timer day. up. Do, 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 Let do, me know do, when you're ready to go and sell, sell, sell. I'm ready when you are. Okay, one, two, three, two minutes. Oh God, two minutes. I'm panicking now. <laughs> <laughs> so the game the game I've picked to sell this week is Celeste, which came out last year and was produced by Matt Makes Games, which I believe is a little indie studio. Mm -hmm. uh, its current price is $14.99 with a sale price of $8.99. So the game is basically a hardcore platformer. It's Everything is about timing. Everything is about making sure that you've got precise movements, making the full use of the movesets. Every level, well... Every stage, should I say, is broken up into kind of different aesthetics and they've all got different abilities that you can unlock. So there's things such as uh, one of them you can kind of fly and it's really difficult. You have to navigate around like little pathways and stuff. Another one is a ball that shoots you to the far end of like a long room. 
So there's a lot of puzzle action to go with it as well. So everything you do, you're kind of constantly looking like, where do I need to, where am I now? Where do I need to be? It's a game that you will die a lot, a lot, a lot. One minute. But maybe two minutes. I don't know. One minute don't... left. Oh, God. <laughs> so, yeah, you will die a lot, but it's not a problem when you die. You die and you start at the back of the same room. So everything's rooms, everything. There's not really a tremendous penalty for dying. It makes it a bit more accessible, even though it is quite difficult, requires a lot of precision. It's one of those games where it's very satisfying to get to the end of it. It's got a great story. It's not It's not too over the top with the story, but the story is basically about overcoming personal adversity. Um, the main character, Madeline, it's essentially a metaphor for depression. She has to climb the mountain and the mountain is a metaphor for her. And along the way, she faces aspects of herself that she has to overcome. And it's just, it's a really nice story. Ten seconds. It's a fun game. I really like it. If I were you, I'd buy it. If you were me, <laughs> you'd buy it. We all want to buy it. Great Two, game. One. That's done. all I need. I was <laughs> waiting for the timer to end before he said, uh, <clears throat> and we also do 0% finance on it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah you've got, you got your cuff links and your gold watch out on then. I can hear it. <laughs> you see my gold teeth, boys. <laughs> uh, right. So first question, Dan, have you got a question for him? Uh, yeah, 2D platform, not 3D platform, right? 2D platform, 2D yeah. Platform. Okay. I was going to ask that, so I'm glad you did. Ooh, um, nice now, if I remember rightly, I've seen this in magazines. Celeste, is is that the... I might be getting it mixed up with another game. Is it a horror game? Is there a horror element to it? There's a mild horror element to it. Um, like jump it, shocks and things Oh, like no, that. Not, nothing like that. It, it's, it's more the there's, there's a very very mild horror element to do with it but it, it's more to do with kind of when, when you're playing madeline has basically an aspect of herself that's like the all the negativity and that kind of uses a lot of like creepy color palettes and stuff but it's, it's a pixel art game so there's only so much creepiness you're really going to fit into it okay dan um i Genuinely, I'm trying to think of questions for this game. So now. I've got a follow-up question to mine then. Um, okay. Is it? Is it? Has it got an anime element to it? Not as such. I mean, the, the certain the certain kind of frames and stuff. A lot of the things are kind of like not animated, but kind of cartoon stylized images. It's, right. So it's so like Polaroid kind of things. The reason I'm asking is because I've got a clear idea of a review that I read, and I wasn't sure if it's the same game or not. Um, and I, but I didn't know that much about the game, so I didn't know if it was a platform or it was a puzzle game or it was a dating simulator or something. But there was an anime element specifically to that one. I don't think it's really anything I'd consider anime. So okay. I suppose my last question then, if Dan's not got one immediately, I, no, I don't. All right. So my last question is: Is it like you said you die a lot? Is it? Is it very quick restarts and absolutely, is it like brutally hard, like a spelunky type thing or? I wouldn't say it's brutally hard. It's, it's kind of the old maxim you get with games like Dark Souls where it's, it's hard, but it's fair. If you mess up, it's usually because, you know, it, it's a simple game with the actual gameplay elements and everything. If you die, it's just because you've messed up and you don't go that far back. You, you die, you come straight back at the start of the same room and you can go again. So there's not really a tremendous penalty for dying. Okay. I don't think I've... I've already kind of made up my mind in my head. All right, it's okay. Just, but we'll we'll wait for the reveal. I've got loads more questions. God, you rubbish, oh, Dan. You can have two of mine, then. I'll oh. transfer two oh, questions. Oh, 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 already oh, breaking oh, oh, our oh, rules. Oh. <laughs> are these transferable? <laughs> these coins are transferable. <laughs> New crypto. That's an in-joke. Well, you have to create a bit a bit chain, or a bit... Uh, uh, blockchain. Blockchain, yeah, before you... <laughs> Question coins. I'm the programmer. You think I know the phrase. Um, uh, yeah, so I had a, a quick one. You just said rooms. So is it is it like single screen or is it multi-screen? Like do you, do you move across a room or? It starts out as being single screen and eventually kind of as the game opens up, you do get bigger screens, but most of it tends to be single screen action. So every, you, you basically can see exactly where you need to go most of the time. It's just up to you how you get there. And is it is it on um xy plane or is it just on the x plane yeah you're it's, running across 
it, it's xy plane it's there's a lot of verticality to it so you are you bouncing off of walls you know you you have a dash ability as well so you can jump then dash in a different direction to kind of get out of the way or to get to something specific and certain items might <clears throat> they might kind of restock that dash so you might be able to dash multiple times through the air to chain them together so you, you get from a very simple set of rules you get quite complex exciting movement i do have one more question can't oh, do oh. this. I've used both of your questions. Have you? Yeah, well, both of them. Already. That was that was a question and a follow up question. Oh, we have to be we have to be strict with these things. We do. I'm, I'm I sorry, Dan. It was a follow up question. That's me. I'm out of. No, go on, no Dan. More. Go on, no, Dan. No. Like I was just going to ask, and I know this kind of probably goes against the idea of the game. You can't reduce a difficulty, can you? Or can you? No. Oh, uh, um, I don't think so. Although I do remember something about a peaceful mode, but it's not something I've tried. Humble brag. Okay. <laughs> well, I did it all on hard mode, mate. <laughs> I, did it, I did it on the harder setting, and then I did it again on the harder, harder setting. <laughs> oh, have you seen the flex on these thumbs, boy? Ooh. <laughs> all right, so Danny, would you buy it? <clears throat> I am going to hard pass on this one. 2D platformers aren't really my thing, and especially hard ones at that, unfortunately. So I'm going to stick the foot down and just say no. I'm sorry, Matt. Okay. I am going to give you it half a point because i'd buy it at the lower price i wouldn't buy it at the 15 quid because i've got so many other 2d platformers that i play i've already got i have actually looked at this one i just cannot remember exactly what it looks like um it's it's not even on my wish list so i've obviously passed on it at some point so i'm going to give you half a point i can live with half a point although i would rec it's a sort of game where if you've either of you have watched any speed ring at all Look for the task bot runs of it where it's automated by a computer. It is insane to see the computer just tear this game apart, especially after you've completed it, to watch the computer just make a complete mockery of you. It's thrilling and also kind of kills you a little bit inside. <laughs> Jesus. So that, that takes you to a point five of a point on top of your existing, what, one and a half? One and a half, I believe, yeah. I think it was. No. I can't even remember. Anyway, no, we'll sure work it out and we'll, sell, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll tell you all next week. However, it doesn't matter because this week, this has all been a trial run. As of next, <laughs> what are we on, 69? As of episode 70, we're restarting everything and we'll have a proper fair competition next week, next, <laughs> next uh, 10 episodes. Yeah, so all good. So on to our main show then. And our first section is the flashback section. This is what games we've played recently and i'll let matt go first because it was daniel last week it was thank you <laughs> cool so recently i've picked up dark souls 3 for i don't know how many th time just because <laughs> yep that's that's a word how many <laughs> just because it's it's the sort of game where i love going back to it i love the story i love the aesthetic i love the location i love the gameplay I love getting absolutely fucking demolished 10 times a night, but that's outside the remit of the game. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's just genuinely one of those games where it, you start out and you are so pathetic playing the game. You are just wailing, a, you're just waving, waggling a sword at these people and they are just chopping you to pieces. And then you go back for like the sixth playthrough or something and you are just rolling past them, bollock naked, beating everything to death with a stick and it's just <laughs> the skill ceiling is quite high with it but once you hit it you feel so empowered to play the rest of the game you can just dance through the game and it feels like you've earned every second of it it's never a i got dark souls uh i think it's dark souls one the first one because there was one before that mm -hmm. wasn't it demon souls or was it the other yeah. way around yeah yeah um <clears throat> so i got dark souls one on the pc in some kind of sale for next to nothing doesn't work that's the only way I've been able to get close to it. There is something called DS Fix for that. I'm not sure if it works on the it's very, very latest builds of Windows, but it definitely is runnable, just in case okay. you're thinking about playing it. Uh, is it worth it now? Yes. I, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of biased, but yeah. Uh, it, um, there's that. I mean, a lot of people are kind of torn. They say, if you're going to play Dark Souls, especially if you're going to play the first one, you can either play the original PC version with the DS Fix patch, which does put a lot of kind it just makes the game better or you could pick up the remastered version which is kind of oh, the same course. thing 
Yeah, they did. I forgot they did that. Well, that's extra money, obviously, Chris. If you've already got the game, it's kind of pointless spending the money against something you're not really that fussed about in the first place, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's yeah. it's it's one of them franchises, the whole Demon Souls, you know, d- Dark Born Soul Demons. <laughs> Souls Born, yeah. I've got, born. I've got <laughs> Souls Souls Born, Born Soul. What's it called? Soul. It, it's tagged as the Souls Born series, if I'm not mistaken, Matt, isn't it? What The Born one. What's that one called? The, uh, uh, born identity. <laughs> <laughs> I've played that. That is absolutely rubbish. It's not hard at all. <laughs> Bloodborne. Bloodborne. Jesus there we go. Christ, is that Jesus? Oh, of course. Yeah. I, I grabbed that in a three, three like, t- a two for three sale on PS4. Uh, I've got it downstairs. It's on my list. I will get to it at some point, but oh, just not. Big, you not played. Yeah. You've not played uh, Bloodborne then yet. Oh, we might. It might get him into Dark Souls. I reckon Matt. if he plays it through, and generally, it's it's hard. Not saying it's easy, but the, they're all kind of different flavors of the same game. And yeah. like with Dark Souls One, it's a bit slower, a little bit more methodical with the combat. Dark Souls Three, it's quite fast in comparison. Then Bloodborne, it's like fighting somebody while you're both on go karts and just everything's whizzing past you. I've, uh, I've I was watching someone play Bloodborne on Twitch. Uh, it was a live stream someone directed me to. I think it was on Twitter. Someone was going, this guy's cheating. He's he's teleporting to different areas of the world and killing people like invisible or something. I don't know what it was doing. But he was streaming this cheat over and over. And he just kept getting banned from servers and then jo- rejoining other servers and stuff. And, and, uh, and it was just like, I didn't really, I mean, I didn't know what the game played like anyway, but I'm just watching this guy do these things that don't look like a computer game. It just, it's just, Spawning from one place, killing someone. That I didn't even, I couldn't even figure out what was going on. So I haven't actually seen any gameplay either. Um, but I will, I will get onto it at some point. I would highly recommend. It. Yeah, I've only played Dark Souls three purely because that's a that is the game that got me into it. But I'm kind of, I think I'm going to go back and play through the others. But even people have told me kind of like it's going to be a lot different to what how I've experienced it with three because three, as Matt said, is quite fast, and two, I believe, is different again and three is compared to one in similar it's like two is the odd one out if i'm not mistaken Matt, isn't it in terms of how it is yeah two yeah. two is the odd one out um but one and three do share a lot in the same world it's it, basically they made one two i believe was kind of a different team that made it and then three i think okay. was a lot of the original team and it it calls back a lot to the first game so if you played the third one and you know the areas and you know the characters it's it's nice to go back to the first one and just kind of see where everything came from because you, you walk around places and think, "Oh shit, I recognise this. I've been here before." Yeah, and it's it's it it's basically kind of they've taken so much from one and just kind of sped it up a bit. And there's new enemies and things like that. Would you say that like well, I have you played the Mass Effect series? Yes, I know. It's, okay. I'm not comparing it to them because I know they're nothing like each other. Oh, you dare! <laughs> <laughs> when you play the same goes to like the Gears of War series. When you play through oh, the games. It. You play you, each game improves and tweaks the mechanisms and the systems in the previous game just a little bit. And the third sit game, fair enough, the story might not be the best, but the actual mechanisms and the, the systems in the game are much, much better, much more refined, easier to play with, nicer to more, more satisfying. Is that how you would describe them as they went on, or would you, or is it are they just different? Have they just implemented different systems and? I, th- I think it's they've kind of streamlined it. That that's the way I kind of think of it. Like the certain things are kind of made accessible that aren't accessible in the first game. Like in the first game, it's it's harder to kind of recover health. Like it, you when you you drink Estus, which is like a limited use um, health potion, and you drink that to kind of recover your health. But you are you you slowed and you can only walk so fast and you can only move so fast while you're using it. So it's a risk reward thing, you know, Mm. but whereas in the third one, it's easy to kind of disengage from combat, chug Estus and then get back into it. Right. So they sped the gameplay up a bit with that kind of thing. Yeah. It it does feel like they've streamlined a lot of it. I mean, there's still a lot to work with there and it's, it's a game of depth, really. That I think that's the thing with it. You, there's so much depth you can have out of it, and so much gameplay and fun you can have out of the game. That that's why I love going back to it. it. You can just you can play through with a complete new group of people or the same old people, and it won't necessarily be the same way you've played through the time before. Yeah. So they're all multiplayer mm-hmm. then, are they? Yep. Okay. Although if you it does... oh go on, Matt. I was just going to say if if you do want to play multiplayer, the thing that you open yourself. To is being invaded by other players 
who might not have your best interests at heart. Yeah. To put it lightly. Might. Might. <laughs> I've had I played games like that, like the Dead Island yeah. uh, franchise. You can get people come in and just destroy what you're trying to do, yeah. Um probably I'm not I'm not unless I'm playing with friends, I'm not bothered. I'm not interested in online really these days. Yeah. It is part of the core gameplay experience. So you kind of get used to, you know, seeing like, oh, invaded by a dark spirit. And then you spend half an hour looking for somebody. And it turns out they were disguised as a chest and just blast you off of a, like, <laughs> blast oh. you off of a roof at the first time you see him. And oh, great. Stop. Quality <laughs> gameplay. <laughs> Bringing back bad memories. <laughs> Wait, but yeah, stop. It's, it does multiplayer very differently to what I've seen. It is very much like a, a drop in, drop out kind of thing, isn't it? And you're not like, you can't. You can't do all bits multiplayer either. Sometimes you have to do certain bits, not multiplayer. And that's cool because it doesn't... That's you single know. player, that, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> Obviously, but... <laughs> it's multiplayer, left... max players won. <laughs> <laughs> you can play with yourself whilst playing with Dark Souls. Um, whoa. <laughs> whoa. Yeah, but like some of the... Some of the um, sections force you to be single player which is quite cool it's like you have to this is your time to 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 fucking do this don't get your bitch friend to come and help you with it you, right. you're doing it and i like that it's like a bit different to how other games play it with the multiplayer side i've heard the hype and i suppose a lot of the time hype in games if it's a triple a it usually puts me off it a little bit because usually i think there's not going to be much depth to it there's not going to be much it's just going it, to to me it's just going to be hard that game, and that's what puts me off. If it's just hard for the sake of being hard, I'm not interested. Oh, it's that. I was just going to quickly interject, quick, and just mention something that it does sometimes. If you do research on the game or hop into subreddits on it and stuff, sometimes it is like a pissing contest. It's like, oh yeah, I did that boss. You know, it's like how hard of a game can you do, and can you do it like no hits and shit like that. It does seem like that, and it often gets used in that way. It's like, oh, have you completed Dark Souls? any of the Dark Souls games kind of thing. It's a bit of like a, a pissing contest. All right. Do you even so, lift, bro? Do you even lift, bro? Do you even time, bro? Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean, but saying that it isn't just hard for the sake of being hard. It also is a really, really nice game, like lore-wise and also looks-wise. So Maybe I'll, I'll give Bloodborne a go. Like, yeah. I've got I've got three games I'm playing on my PS4 at the moment, which is Spider-Man, um, which I'm nearly done with. It's like the 10% from the end, 5% from the end. Got about two story missions left. Um, God of War, which I haven't started yet, which I'm very much looking forward to playing, mm. um, f for a number of reasons, not just for uh, not just for the actual gameplay, but the like the single camera aspect as well. Apparently, that's quite a feat, and I I'm looking forward to having a go at that. Um, and then Souls. Well, I've got loads of other games as well on my stack, but so uh, <laughs> Blood Bloodborne's the next one. All right, shall we move on? Next game. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, go before be... you today, Danny. Right. You can go last. Yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I've been okay. playing a, 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 li a little-known indie game called A Story About My Uncle. I wasn't going to talk about this because <laughs> I didn't enjoy it. I've got to be honest with you. All right? <laughs> I felt I felt violated. But it... <laughs> oh, it's shaping up to be exactly what I thought it would be. Have you heard of it first, guys? Have you seen it? Or... No. <sighs> you know? <laughs> <laughs> right, so, so what it is, it's... Um, have you heard of the like Dear Esther, Gone Home, um, uh, Vanishing of Ethan Carter? I've heard of Dear Esther. Is, is this all like the story? They're is all different games. Happened? They're all different indie game titles. Have you heard oh, of so any of those? Oh, so it's not like Ethan Carter vanished and they think it was the uncle? No, no, it wasn't oh. the uncle. I can tell you that. The, the uncle's oh. still around. In fact, oh, that's the whole point of the game. Oh, my God. Right. So anyway, they're all walking Walk simulators. Up. That's the that's right. the problem. They're all walking simulators. The reason I wanted to talk about this is because it was a short game. I started playing it. I put it down because I played it downstairs with the missus first and we just were playing it. It's like the same thing over and over and over and over and there's not much to it. You're essentially, you essentially, you start off in this house. You get given this magic glove, like suit thing with a glove that has a grappling hook on it. And you have to grapple you you way across platforms, right? I know that's it. There's not much, not much more to it than that. <laughs> so you have to grapple your way from nephew to nephew. <laughs> yes, <laughs> to, to the frog people. Uh. To the frog people. <laughs> <laughs> but no, the, it's not right. It's 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 done by a, a studio called Coffee Stain Studio. Who've done a lot of good games. Um, it's not. It looks nice. It's it's interesting if you like platforming, but it's a three D platforming game. Okay, you're gonna say something, Danny. 
Yeah, I have just Google imaged the game, uh -huh. and there used to be a YouTuber who had this as like a, you know when people do talking on a video and have have to fill out the video with some kind of content, mm -hmm. and it was Matt might know who this is. A guy called Leafy, he used to be on YouTube. He used to play this game, and I always wonder what the hell it was because right. it's just like a mindless grapple to your platform, and that's it. Carry on. You get a few and different things that you get, like rocket boots. At one point, you get grapple with a few. You can like grapple three times by the end of the game instead of just once before you have to hit a platform. It's a platforming game, but it's a three D platform game. It's it's three hours long. It, it took me two hours, in fact. It's not that good, and it's just like. I was just, it's one of them games that when I put it down after about 90 minutes, I looked it up and I thought, well, am I close to the end? Because it doesn't feel like there's much more to this game. <laughs> I'm just grappling from platform to platform. There's an interesting-ish story. You know, it's it's kind of a slightly compelling, not that much, not enough for me to keep going. And I was so close to the end that I thought I'd go back and finish it. And then it gets really, really difficult towards the end. It's like, unless you're really good with the mouse... Yeah, you and and there's there's a speed run element as well to it. There's time trials in it, and I think people, if you look it up, there are probably people who have done a level in twelve seconds instead of forty five minutes, like it takes me half the time to do these things. But playing it as well with a tiny little mouse downstairs on a wireless keyboard on my Steam Link on my front room television, trying to do precision aiming with a mouse is just absolutely comical. But yeah, I wanted to very, very briefly talk about that this week. No, I was just going to say, so it does have a skill ceiling then with it. You have to get good with, because I've seen people, obviously I mentioned, I've seen someone play it and it did look to get yeah. quite complex with. It's it's simple, but yeah, to get, it's one of them, it's easy to play and then hard to really master. If you want to, if you want to fling yourself across the level dead quickly, I mean, I've, I've, every single level I fell down about 40 times. I fell off the, the, the world before you know I, I wasn't bothered about doing it i just wanted to get to the end and have it finished and over and done with you know <laughs> but it's not a very good review for the <laughs> it's quite old now as well i think it's been out at least a few years um but i had it on my list for ages because it was one of them that looked really good all of the trailers made it look really good and they, it, what there was a bit of hype around it at the time and sh what shouldn't have bothered shouldn't have bothered <laughs> So could you say that with the difficulty spike that this is the Dark Souls of walking simulators? <laughs> it's a good way of looking at it. Probably, yeah, considering most walking simulators are... W-A-S-N-D, and just carry yeah, on. Yeah, and then occasionally E, you know, when <laughs> you... There's, there's, what, something the that's, there's something that's flashing over there, go and press E on it and do it in a particular order sometimes or walk around in a forest for four hours before you figure <laughs> out what next thing you need to press E on. Yeah. Or one of those quick time events that you could actually just leave for half an hour and it's still <laughs> fine. <laughs> yeah. 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 Brilliant. But saying that, I have enjoyed, like, I enjoyed the story in, in Gone Home. I enjoyed the, the surprise element at the end. But other than that, they're all very similar. You know, they look very pretty. Um, yeah. Like at, least this, at least this one had a bit more to do than most walking simulators, but I thought the story lacked massively. It didn't do much. There wasn't. Guess what? You find your uncle. I'm sorry, I spoiled it for everyone, but it's, you know. That was in my basket. I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, moving I'm sorry. on. No point. No points from me. I wouldn't buy it. No, Zero no. Points. That's why I didn't use it for my. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> no point. <laughs> yeah. You would have smashed it out of the park with that. But uh, yeah, the other game that I've gone back to this actually this week has been the first Dying Light game. I talked about Dying Light 2 mm. last episode, I believe. Mm -hmm. I briefly went into Dying Light 1. But someone I know hadn't played it. They had it in their library, and they said they played 30 minutes of it. And I was just like, you what, mate? You've only played 30 minutes of Dying Light. <laughs> you need to get on that with me. We need to do it. So we've been playing that with just straight in with the multiplayer from the, from the start. And we started on the hard difficulty. And it was too hard. <laughs> <laughs> it was... When games do hard... And they just purely increase the health of um, an enemy. It fits in some games. It doesn't fit in others. Mm. When you've got a lead pipe and you're smacking on a skull or you're kicking somebody literally shouting Yorkshire down at them whilst you're <laughs> booting them on the floor, there becomes... Are you still talking about a game, Dan? <laughs> yeah, we are. <laughs> it's not my weekend for <laughs> A's. American History matches. Excellence. <laughs> <laughs> this, is, this is Dying Light, but we put it on hard mode. And we were... So there's the zombies, which... Uh, 
enough, like they take enough from a lead pipe, especially to the skull. But we also you come across actual living characters, NPCs, and stuff that you've got to kill. They're a little bit tankier. Are we going back? You you love culling things, don't you? I love You're culling, culling the human race. Yeah. No, not, that not is monsters it. anymore. <laughs> fictional fictional creatures. It's, and I know I've not explained quite to the listeners and what have you what Dying Light is. It's basically a first person parkour zombie survival game. It's brilliant. If you didn't know, it's really good. And going back to the hard mode scenario, so we were kicking a guy on the floor. <laughs> yes, we were shouting Yorkshire. I'll have video proof. <laughs> And it was outside of a weather spray at the time. <laughs> <laughs> and after about the 100th kick, it gets a little bit unrealistic. <laughs> <laughs> You're kicking him with a bloody stump. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll I'll paint a picture. We were in a school. You just did. That was a pretty good one. <laughs> no, I'll paint an even better one. We were in a school. One of these NPCs God. runs through a door, bursts his way through, acting the hard man. And in this case, he was a hard man. <laughs> we start... <laughs> We kicked him once and he fell down. Great, cool. We can batter him. We were kicking him into a bookcase, as in he was ragdolling the entire time. <laughs> For three minutes, I'm going to be reserve, I'm going to reserve it and say three minutes we were kicking this guy and he did not die. And we were <laughs> we got to the point where we kicked him that much, his actual head exploded, and we were like, I can't believe we've just. <laughs> he was still this guy moving. <laughs> <laughs> and it was absolutely. So I'm just going to put put that out there. If you want to play Dying Light on anything apart from normal mode, get <laughs> get really ready for some just unrealistic health levels and that's what i think it does badly with that but the core gameplay on normal mode is a bit more realistic as in if you hit somebody with something it's gonna a couple of tries after that maybe two hits three hits they're gonna die and that's i all know right. though that kicking in a game unless you're playing ufc is not a way to attack people you need to get weapons but at the same time as if we we're going to go back to the Weatherspoon scenario, kicking someone in the head outside of Weatherspoons. It would only take three or four tries, realistically, wouldn't it? It's, it's hard. Oh, God, no. Never done it. <laughs> never, never, never been. Neither have I. Neither have I. Never my Saturday night, mate. What's this? Oh, wait, I've got to go. Sorry, guys. <laughs> <laughs> but, woo, um, woo. <laughs> we were picking up. Yeah, we picked up the story. We played on hard mode. We've since reverted to normal mode just for because it feels better to play. It's not so stupidly hard. <laughs> yeah. It's. So what what mod is this? Is this like the Vinnie Jones mod where everyone's <laughs> just kicking him into it? He's like, oh, are you saying? Oh. <laughs> it's, um, no, it's not. It's not modded at all. It's purely built into the game a difficulty level. Vinnie Jones mod <laughs> in the game. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just in general, it's a really, it, I think it has a lot of replayability. It is an open world game. It's got obviously a linear story, but there's a lot of side quests to go and do. Not all of them are interesting. Some of them are actually really dull, and some of them are annoying. Depends on how they rip the character for it, but most of the time, it's it's got a lot of replayability, especially with the weapon system. So it's got a crafting element in there. So you get your basic med kits, lock picks, and stuff like that to pick and you know pick locks and heal yourself. You don't get much deviation from that. But the weapon side of thing does get quite interesting because you've got mods for weapons. So you might get a cricket bat, and you can get a mod for it where you strap like two ups batteries onto it and just coat it in wire and then suddenly you've got an electric prod stick to, 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 to <laughs> that's zombie games all over though have you played yeah um, it's just in yeah dead right dead rising, dead rising. Where, you, yes. where you get a wheelchair a battery <laughs> a machine gun and some tape and you've suddenly got armageddon you've suddenly got like this you just it's, more down zombies <laughs> it feels very similar to that not quite as outlandish no, as, no. as dead rising but yeah you've got it pretty much there but um uh, dying With, light uh, has halva bars light. so I mean, that uh, wins yeah, out, right? Yeah, it does. Is it is it based in, like, Poland or something like that? It's based in the Middle East. It's, like, basically... Yeah. I think it's okay. probably based on, like, Can't remember Israel where Halva Bars are from. It's... I think it's based in, like, Israel or something. Like, that was the inspiration for it, because you've got a very, very poor part, and then the halfway through the game, you get to a very, very rich part. And mm. It just... It breaks the game up quite nicely. I've but heard, just... I've... Go on. I was going to say, I played it on PS4. I said I got it fairly i think i said like when you were talking about dying light 2 actually dying light 2, yeah um and, I, and I, I thoroughly enjoyed it but i don't think i completed it and i should i think i'd much prefer it on mouse and keyboard to especially because yeah. of the parkour yeah um, absolutely well i'm just there tapping the space bar the entire time whether i'm needing to get up an object or not it's just constantly on the go but it's definitely one of the most I keep saying this about certain games, but it is a good laugh and a good wholehearted laugh in a game just out of pure what's happening in the game. Not because somebody said something funny about something in the game. It's like mm. actual content that you're 
aka kicking how, someone to death. It's multiplayer. What it, how far away can you? Is are you tethered to each other or can you? No, you're not. Um, you just go wherever you want. You can just go wherever you want. But if you're doing things like, if you're doing things like that, generally you're trying to progress through the story or do side quests, and you all, it does require you to all be on that spot where the quest is to proceed there is a fast travel element in there so if someone's miles away and they need to get to a quest you can just hold a button and it'll bring you to it and what's the um, be... what's the th like the the third person animation like for the parkour does it look really good when other people are parkouring over things uh it can look a bit janky it depends on if you're doing what i would say a move that they planned for the developers so if you're <laughs> doing something janky where you're trying to climb up a wall but use that wall as like a half of a step up to another wall you, your animations go a bit you know a bit right. knackered up but for the most part it does look pretty cool like seeing other people jump and stuff like that yeah pretty nice and it might be something you... might be something i stick on my wish list and, and get onto on the pc because i get said if I, even if i haven't completed it i want it to, i want to play on pc yeah and i mean i'm always up for mm. replaying it like i don't really like i know the story enough now that i'm not so fussed my my purely my draw at the moment to the game is just getting into it with people mm. and just like i don't know like whacking a gas tank and throwing it near them so that they, they're down and they're like what happened there so it's like that with me mate i just gas tanks you get get wrecked um but yeah we're we back to weather spoons yeah we are <laughs> <laughs> but just in general just so much so much fun so much content you can make yourself as well just like by doing random stuff across the map it's just brilliant so yeah you yeah, like games like that way you've got that option to kind of it, it the more that they're putting in, the more you can play with, the better. Yeah. Especially if it's multiplayer and you can just... is it Can you, can you kind of mess with people you're playing with a bit as well? Can you kind of put them off or like put them out or knock them off things? You can't. So it does this weird effect when you're close to someone. It sort of like dithers them and they become mm. like invisible and you will pass straight through them. It would be absolute carnage if you couldn't do that because if you were in the you know in the tight spaces and stuff like that when like you've got doorways and stuff and there's a zombie coming through you can get end up getting into that situation where your characters start to get locked and you can't move and you're just basically get wrecked it does that for a good reason so you can't really f with people in that sense you can as i said gas tank people which is basically pick up like hit something that you know the the, the age-old red barrels in games explode in dying light if you hit one it leaks and you've got a timer it's like a grenade you can pick it up then and you can throw it at other people and in fact a mate of mine used to do that all the time to us we'd be in a room he'd be outside and they just hear this and it'd just be like oh he's thrown in the tank in and we all just get downed and it, you can piss off you know piss with people like that so but that's about the, to the extent you can really okay can you lead zombies to them if uh if you want to be a right smart you can yes so you will draw you will draw well you can you can be in an area and just like slowly gain attention of zombies or you can pull out a gun if they're like afk or something if you shoot it in an area you get the fast ones that come out and they will just literally you'll hear screams and then they'll just start to like flood the area so if you really want it to be a dick just use a gun all the time because it just gets you absolutely trashed because yeah, yeah, yeah. they're all running for you it's nuts but yeah that's what i've been I'm just playing. writing this i'm just writing this down danny for when i play it thanks <laughs> weather spoons on friday griefing tactics for dying lights <laughs> <laughs> oh god i wish i had given that all away now i can't play with any of you guys with <laughs> it's just gonna be a grief session the entire time his friends um, hate him. find out this <laughs> one weird trick <laughs> I, uh, I I don't I, I can't grief people. I'm so I'm too nice in games. Oh, I, I mean I know I'm, I'm I, and I get it's like it's like a practical joke in real life. If someone pulls a practical joke on me, I can get really narky about it because I'm such a sensible, level-headed guy normally. And I'm like, that's just it make it it's just embarrassing me for for no reason. It's upsetting, and I feel the same yeah. in games. I'm kind of like that. I'm on the fence about it, though. In games, I'll do whatever I want. I can tell Matt I'll... isn't, though. Nah, he's a pranker, I... I can tell. Most of the time, I'm pretty fair with people, but every now and then, I will see something, and it's just, like, there is no angel on my shoulder. There's just a devil going, do it. Yeah, <laughs> you know, all right. Go on, go on. I'll give you that, because some, <laughs> sometimes that that occurs to me, but I usually just fake it and go, oh, it was a mistake, sorry. <laughs> so just, You're the worst so type. <laughs> You have to double down on it. You have to lean into being a prick. <laughs> You've got to iron those non-prick creases out and you have really got to go for it, yeah. If you want to be the very best knobhead you can be, follow me, son. <laughs> right, yeah. I'm I'm signed up. Give me a give me a form now, application form. Can I have some of those knobhead coins we were talking about? <laughs> Let me just authenticate it on my blockchain. <laughs>
inside joke, guys. I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. not going to take the time to explain that one, but yeah. Just watch the outtakes. <laughs> okay, yeah, we'll, we'll do an outtakes video at some All point. Right. Uh, right, so games we're looking forward to. We have ran over slightly, but I think we haven't got much hardware news this week, so we should be doing all right. Uh, go on, Matt. What are you looking forward to? So for me, I'm looking forward to Halo Reach finally Why? coming to the PC. Why? Oh, this is getting very, very aggressive. aggressive isn't it? Like an attack dog. <laughs> Anything with Halo on it in the title these days, I'm like, done it. Whatever. Yeah, but have you done it on the PC? Uh, well, back in back in the day, yeah. No. <laughs> All right. No, yeah. <laughs> Not a good maybe Halo, one, maybe Halo One and Two, but you haven't played Reach on the PC. No, well, I don't even know what Reach is. To be fair, I'm just being a twat. I, 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 I genuinely don't know what kind of game Reach is. It's not like, is it a first person oh, nice still? See... No, no, it's a third person anime dating sim now. No, nice. of course, it's a first. It's like Metal Gear what? Acid. It's Halo, a turn-based card Wars game. Halo Wars is an RTS game, isn't it? So come on, yeah, give but... me a break. Oh, oh Halo Wars was great. Well, I'm glad you said that before I said nobody's ever played it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, Halo Reach, yep, it's very much more of the same that you get with Halo. It's just the final of bringing the Master Chief collection to the PC, and it's it was kind of the stalwart game for me growing up. I used to play the shit out of Halo. So for it to finally come to PC, I can play through it again. I can play through it with my friends online. I can do the multiplayer again. It's just, it, I've been waiting so long for this. I'm just so excited to go and play halo again and you can shake your head all you want it's not going to change the fact that i love that game <laughs> i'm on mat with, with this one chris i do like halo it's fine you're allowed you're allowed to disagree with me but you're both wrong so <laughs> your opinion is wrong sir <laughs> to, be, to be fair again it's one of them games i played to death in the xbox days you know and i think i've got one two and three i don't know if i completed three because i got i got cured of it I can't. I can't remember how. It was like you know the flood section in the first game. Yeah. I mean that. I don't know why I continued playing it after that because it just drove me up the wall. It was just so linear and boring, and the gameplay, the story was interesting, but the gameplay just, just. I've been at that that time in my life. I've been playing like first person games forever. And everyone was proper going on about how awesome Halo was, and it was one of the first decent FPSs on consoles and again I was cured of the the hype around it I suppose but there was also things like this is one of the first first person games that's got um vehicles in it and it's got physics for the vehicles you could throw the flip you know warhogs. yeah flip warhogs and stuff <laughs> and again I'd been playing tribes before that I'd been playing and and I just it was all my console mates going oh my god it's fucking brilliant and I'm like done it mate <laughs> all of it. So I just these days, Halo just doesn't mean much to me. I'm I'm sorry, I'm that guy. That's that's fair. I, I understand if you've come from PC gaming and then everybody's like absolutely going mad about this game, and you're just yeah. sat there like I've been I've been doing this for a little while already. <laughs> uh, that's fair enough. But it, I I hadn't like when how, when did the first Halo come out? Was it like 2002, something like that? Quite oh. early on. But I, I I didn't have a gaming PC. All I had was an Xbox. So when that game came out, it just it was everything I wanted. It was sci-fi. It was you know exciting FPS combat. Like you said, it had the physics. It had the multiplayer. It just had everything that the PC crowd probably yeah did have for quite a while before that. But it was something I could get. It was something I could play, and it's always kind of just stuck around for me. So when I found out they were doing the Master Chief Collection for the Xbox, I, the first thing I thought is, oh, this is great. I get to play it again. And then seven years went on and they went, right, well, it's coming out for PC now. So, well, not now, but we'll we'll, we'll let you know. It's coming soon. So is Reach a new game? No. Um, Reach isn't. Um, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it the Master Chief that. Collection or is it a different game or what? I, I, don't, I don't actually know what Reach is. It's, um, it was the prequel to the original trilogy. So... Right. The, the the mention remember reach a couple of times like going through you know halo one two three and reach is kind of the big it's like the big staging ground for everything that happens in the three games so it's they it was kind of the i think it was the final one on the 360 or was um or was that halo 4 i'm not too sure but they um it, it basically took it all back to that you had slightly different mechanics you had like a squad to play with 
it, it just kind of like messed about with some things. But it, it it's more for me, just like I say, it's re it's like seeing an old friend for the first time in years, and you know they haven't changed, and neither have I because I'm an eternal man child. I was so say there's, there's a theme with you, Matt. You, you, every, all of the games that you're looking forward to are remakes. Well, most of them are remakes of old games that you used to play. I don't like change. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> I will resonate on that one with you, Matt. I well, think I what you did there. Ah, ah. Um, Halo for me, yeah. I think I would pick up the Master Chief like like you know, the Master Chief collection because yeah, I haven't. I dropped Halo at three because I didn't. I didn't do. I didn't you do were three I I, when Halo came out. No, very young. No, I dropped Halo. <laughs> oh yeah, I dropped the case at three. It broke half. Completed time. it, mate. <laughs> no, as in I finished Halo three and then that was really all I touched of it because I I will. Then go over to Chris's side. Yeah, I kind of got bored of Halo because I had been playing it to death and I've been playing it around at friends' houses and it got very stale very quickly. I didn't like the multiplayer aspect of Halo as much as I did like the story and the lore for it. Hmm. I'm with you so, there as well. I, I got the, the multiplayer. Again, I've been doing that for years and I've been playing like semi-professionally in Quake Leagues and stuff. And, and I just, it was just like, this is naff in comparison. You know, I didn't, I just didn't get it. But I, I, Matt made a very, very good point, and he brought me well down to earth with it, to be honest, because it's good being opinionated, but at the same time, I didn't look at it from your perspective. My job, my my real-life job is about looking at other people's perspective and, you know, taking everything into consideration and making sure that everyone's happy. And I don't do that with games. It's my games, they're mine, and my opinion is the one that's important. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, we all have as uh, you know opinions, and we all have as ties to games, don't we? But yeah, I get what you're saying. It's it's easy to kind of look at something and go, why why would you play that when there's all this other stuff? I, I'm guilty of it. I, I for so many years I looked at consoles after switching to PC gaming, and just it's that PC elitist master race shit, isn't it? And you look at it like, why would you play that? I can play whatever I want, and I can I use whatever controller I want. I don't do that as so much these days. I did used to, and I've just done that with Halo, but. <laughs> I meant, I, meant, I meant I meant it in like that was back then. I haven't even considered Halo as a franchise or a game that I would buy uh, either new new entries in the franchise in the canon or, or or even old you know games. I've never went back to. But these days, I'm I'm a lot more open because I've got all the consoles and because it depends entirely. Some games I prefer playing with a, a joypad. It really does depend. For God's sake, I picked I, I started playing. Um, Oh, survival game by Clay. Uh, don't starve. Started playing Don't Starve yesterday, just randomly. Just picked it up and, and started playing. I played it loads, but on a on a pad. Weirdly, it's really well well done on a pad. It works quite well. But you know, uh, it's it's not that elitism for me. It was more the actual franchise itself didn't do much for me because I'd played other games and it wasn't that I'd played them on PC or anything. It just don't know. Yeah, the core it. content of the game, yeah. regardless of platform, was stale for you at the, the time it came yeah. out, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, I understand yeah. that. <clears throat> I completely disagree, but I understand. So I, <laughs> we're allowed to disagree, but you're wrong. Um, right, moving on. Unless Matt's got anything else to say, what? what in fact, nope. what are you excited about specifically? Is it just the nostalgia element, or? It, it, well, I guess so. Yeah, it, it's well. Reach is the only game uh, what, going through the series. It got to Reach, and I never finished it. So it's nice to have that to go back to. It's like I can go back and, you know, in the words of the marketing department, uh, not Bungie, three, four, three, I can start the fight or finish the fight or what, there's some kind of fight and I'm going to get involved in it, basically. <laughs> there's like one outside Danny. Weatherspoons on Friday if you were. Uh... I'll do that. <laughs> Look for Danny, he'll be the one in red. He'll Bring your boots. Red. <laughs> Bring your thickest old boots. <laughs> yeah, Danny. basically, nostalgia. Sorry. Nostalgia, basically. <laughs> So yeah, a game that I'm looking forward to is a game called GTFO, which, yes, it means get the fuck out. <gasps> you sword. I, I know. It doesn't have Believe an announcement me. date thus far, which is annoying. Nor does it have a price attached to it, oh, okay. which is, again, annoying. All it has is an early access page saying you can, at some point in the near future, pre-purchase this. I thought it was already out in, on early access. No, I, well, I, at least on Steam, I would have, <laughs> I'd have got it by now if I could have bought it. Um, no pricing. It's just it says it's going to be in early access, and it's a game that is basically as most games that I come up with, co-op, four player, 
very heavily teamwork based and it's the type of game i'll just say who it's made by by the way it's by a developer called 10 chambers collective and it feels to me through the, from the actual material i've watched they've got like a bit of a dev blog going on with like interviews qas and stuff like that it seems very if it is, i know i asked this you to you earlier chris but you you haven't seen the scp foundation stuff have you no i don't, I don't. No. what does scp stand for it's secure contain and protect and it's just basically a, a site that's got lots of fictional stuff on it that people write but it's really really well done it's right. like quite immersive some of them are crap some of them are good have you have you looked at scp stuff before matt um yeah i used to read it when it was cop copy pasta stuff copy on pasta. 4chan so it's Old it's school. like little snippets on scp foundation but it feels very inspired by that the, the 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 basically the game is laid out is you're going into this underground complex i believe it's on an in, an interstellar body somewhere and you're basically told by an entity called the warden that you need to go down into the complex and do things for him basically but you're just like a, oh yeah no it's not my With uncle my uncle <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's basically you're not you're not military or anything you're just like a ragtag bunch of four dudes who are like part of what the complex used to be i'm assuming mining because it's very you know chasms and like valve doors and stuff like that it's very that kind of feel and you just like four guys going down to do complete objectives and the aim is as far as the game's title lets on is you need to basically get the fuck out of there and it's a game that first person shooter heavily teamwork based and to the point where you're like always starving for ammunition and you're always starving for health and if you don't take a scenario correctly or communicate it with your people that you're playing with you're basically not going to pass and that's the type of game i really like is mm. to just rather than just like chat shit with your friends it kind of sit down and like think about it for a second and just like right okay how are we going to tackle this next zone that we're going to go where into? you're all responsible for you where it, the, the for team yeah, decision exactly yeah. and um it's just looks amazing the actual like aesthetic of it they've got a lot of it, like lighting effects going on lots of like haze in the game so it makes it really difficult to see what might be around the next corner you've also got um like the the from what i've seen the enemies actually have a really cool mechanic called feelers. So if you open like a, <laughs> I know it sounds so bad. Basically, if you open a door, they've got like these almost like translucent tentacles that some of them can put out. And it's like, it's visible to everybody in the game, but they're sort of like, uh, it's almost like, a, you know, on Metal Gear where they've got the vision thing and you can, you can tell when you're going to get spotted very similar right, in yeah, that corner very similar corner yeah vision. corner vision very similar in that but these are like tentacles and if you touch like if you touch one it'll go red it retracts them and then that's it the horde comes for you and it like it basically all just rush for you so i know i was saying <laughs> last week that i don't like horror games <laughs> but i don't mind it so much when i've got four other people to sort of take the sorry three other people to take the brunt while i piss off and run down the so corridor it's, that it's just quite come suspenseful back that, it sounds yeah really suspenseful and it just looks like a a really good game to just pick up with a couple of friends and take seriously for once because a lot of games we don't and I'm, yeah. I'm looking forward to a change of pace what are you definitely. talking about how can you say that we don't take games seriously no as in like how how, how can i phrase this without sounding like a dick like you're not serious yeah. enough for him you, he needs more role playing he needs yeah. more very needs more, yeah uh, team if, communication you know what i'm totally on danny's side here because Every th every game that Danny talks about, I want to play, but I don't have enough friends. <laughs> I don't. That's the problem. I don't have enough friends who are serious enough about games who want yeah. to get involved in it. I don't necessarily like. I think Dan's more in, from what I gather, more into like the role playing element of of certain types of games. You know, like your military sims and things like that. Yeah. I I probably would be into that, but I've never really had the opportunity because I've not had the right group of friends. We're all more into. They're into horde games. They're into. You know, like um, what's that? It's killing floor type thing. You know, oh yeah, relatively oh, yeah. simple kind of horde, just kill everything type thing. Yeah, waves, it's just like you know, there are tactics that can be employed there, but don't have yeah. to be kind of thing. Yeah, like, you can play it run and gun if you want. Basically. Yeah, exactly. That's GTFO seems to change that, and even the devs have said it's specifically designed to slow the pace of the game down, so that you're all in sync with each other and actually it's like how much ammo have you got that kind of thing or the ammo pack over there you take that then because you're going to need that and that kind of stuff and 
I'm really, yeah, I'm really looking forward to, to actually getting hands on with that. Whether or not other people might buy it along with me is yet to be determined. I have seen a couple of other people who've put it on their wish list on Steam. So maybe when it does drop, it'll, you know, get a few people on and I'll be able to hop in with them because it does seem, I'm not sure if they're going to do like a lobby based system where you can just randomly join with the people and just do voice chat. I'm assuming you can because otherwise it'd be pretty hard to play the game since it's a four stack game. But that's even worse <laughs> if you get me you know playing with random strangers online that might not be like in the mindset and ready mm. to take it on so seriously kind of detracts from it but yeah it looks looks bloody brilliant and i can't wait yeah i mean joking aside it does actually sound quite entertaining to play I, as it, it the thing that kind of got me was when he said that they've designed it to slow it down like you you play so many games where you just blitz through the level you just you know you've got ammo coming out the ass and nothing stands in your way and Everyone's ninja yeah. looting because the the yeah I, I I'm with you there I don't I I rather take my time over a game you know I've got so little time to put into games I'd rather spend it and and be proper dedicated to it for that period of time yeah, yeah definitely I mean just just on a personal note um you said that it's kind of got the vibe of the SCP Foundation thing. I say. It's probably wrong to say the vibe of the SCP Foundation. It seems like it could have been taken out of an SCP okay. article, basically. It's not because the SCP stuff is like, it can range from loads of different crap to like really daft stuff, like a motherboard that has eyes. But like, <laughs> <laughs> did you ever read I'm the looking one at what the... you're doing. But <laughs> did you ever read the one about the vending machine that would spell all sorts of different things? And I think one of them was like, it just it was like a can of Coke, but it was full of teeth or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't come across that one. But yeah, that's what I mean. Like, yeah, so saying it was a bad phrase was true because the SCP stuff covers a lot. It seems like it could be some... Because SCPs aren't just things, they can be areas too. And that's what sort of made me think it's kind of inspired by that. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Cool. To it definitely sounds yeah. similar. I'm, I'm up for that. Honestly, Dan, give me a shout. If you're playing a game, give us a shout and I'll see if... If I haven't got it, I'll see if I can... I want to get it and jump in with you. No worries. It well, I've got like you right, right up my street, your stuff. <laughs> I've got it on my follow list. So I'll keep an eye out on that one. But as I mentioned earlier, I'll probably be buying Beat Rock Galactic. And I think there was one other that I play that you were sort of interested in. Squad, I'm, I'm quite interested in Squad. Squad, yes. And I think we were sort of debating on Space Hulk Deathwing. I get that sounds again yeah. like another one that I'd be well <laughs> up for. I love oh, co-op games. Games where it, that, that pacing, if you're paced, so you all have to stay in the same area. And if someone runs off, they're going to die, then or they're going to ruin the mission. People learn very quickly in that situation. And yeah. you'll, you'll do a few, you know, I'll probably do it. I'll be absolutely rubbish for, you know, first time I jump into a game with you, but I'll be, I'll be yeah. I want to learn. And... Want to learn, exactly, yeah. And that's that's half the fun of it, is yeah. like learning to play your position properly, as it were. But yeah, so, cool. So my, my game awesome. this week that I'm looking for, sorry, Matt, Oh no! I just said awesome. Sorry. Awesome. Sorry. Um. Uh. Yeah. The my game I'm looking forward to uh, this week is is Subnautica Sub Zero. Subnautica, the original. Um. Sub Zero's a, a not a DLC or anything. It's a it's a f another full game. It's on the same planet as the original, but Subnautica is a survival uh, exploration game. So you could look at it a little bit like a walking sim, a little bit like a survival game where you collect instead of berries, you collect in water berries because you're <laughs> <laughs> and you, you're breaking you know you're breaking rocks to you're breaking rocks to get resources and you're mining things and drilling things but have either of you played subnautica at all i've played subnautica yeah yeah i've played subnautica did you like it yeah i i think i kind of approached it the wrong way because I, I i got it with the idea of trying to play it with vr and it just never quite seemed to work properly for me so i, I dropped it and maybe i should go back to it oh my god how much did you play of it, Matt? Um, not a lot, if I'm honest. So the, the beauty of Subnautica is when I f started playing it, and, the, and the re I didn't know anything about it whatsoever. I'd never looked anything up. I heard that it was good, and I heard it was a survival game, and I thought, I'll give it a go. Grabbed it in a sale for like nine quid, something like that. And I thought, I thought oh, I'll have a go. And Something got me excited to play it, so I grabbed it, and I played it um, upstairs on my, on my own initially, and then... I got so into it so quickly. I got it, it drew me in with the progression element in it. It's the you start you start off just collecting little things. It's like any survival game. You start off simple and you end up with a 
fucking mansion, you know, a massive house that does everything. But th there's something about the draw of the story and the way that it's presented in the in Subnautica. You get little things like glitches happen, little things happen. Um, there's timed events that occur and like a ship will blow up or some another ship will try and rescue you. So all kinds of stuff. And I'm not going to spoil it for anybody watching because it's one of them games that you enter with no knowledge. As long as you enjoy the survival element, don't worry about the fact that it's underwater because there's absolutely nothing annoying about being underwater in this game because the underwater sections in a lot of games spoil them for me. It completely ruins the pace. It's, they're usually boring. It's usually like, oh, God, I just want to get over this bit to get to the next bit. The whole game is like that. And, it, and it, as you play it, Everything that you unlock and everything that you you build builds into this. It's a masterpiece. It's it's my number one game of all time, and I'll say that boldly. For story, for I've played through it five times in the last year since I got it. Um, I can now complete it in I don't know twelve hours instead of sixty hours the first time I played it. People completed in twenty seven minutes, you know, because of glitch runs and stuff. Um, but it has got a speed run thing around it. It's got a proper awesome modding community. Um, there's things like the, the, there's certain mods that I'll install in my game. Um, you get so many resources in it that managing your resources and putting it all in lockers is a nightmare. But there's 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 a, a mod that you can get that auto sorts everything in the lockers, so that kind of satisfies your my my OCD wanting to collect everything and also wanting to organize everything like in i played um what's the original elder scrolls not the f arena the one after that the first decent one balmoral is in it balmoral not oblivion Castle. the one before oh, morrowind is it yes morrowind morrowind it didn't have containers in it i did but they were really primitive um you couldn't there wasn't any like armor um things you could put armor on. So I laid out every single piece of armor in one of the houses that I killed everybody in, because you couldn't buy a house or anything in that game. So I killed everyone in this house, laid out every single piece of armor on the floor, and every time I walked into that room, I clipped a piece of it, and it all went fucking flat, you know, it's a real <laughs> <laughs> But that's that's the level of OCD that I get in these kind of games. I absolutely love the collection element, but there's just everything about it, everything until the last moment in that game is I want to play it more. Me and the wife, because I went downstairs to play it uh, with her on the Steam link, and I thought, you might enjoy watching this because it's quite quite interesting. And she, I can also hand the controller to her because there's very little peril in the game, but there's enough for it to be difficult, especially later on in the game. Um, but everything, everything you get, everything you scan is like, it's just edging you towards that one more. I've got to just, just get the next piece. I've just got to get the next L right okay so I'll, I'll do this i'll go back to my base and then i'll do that and then you get carried away with something and then you want to go and do something else and then oh i saw a cave that i want to go and explore oh what and it just the excitement i had playing that game i haven't felt it since i was very young <laughs> and the reason i'm looking forward to this new one is because they're adding lo loads of new elements to it i'm not going to have the same level of excitement because i know what to expect from the mechanics i know how it's going to work but i i hope i've sold it to you i am it's so beyond every other game I've, I've ever played. An unknown world's absolute geniuses for coming up with it. You've definitely made me want to go back and pick it up. Although I do want to know what, what's actually going to be different about this new one. Um, well, the original game was set underwater on planet B2863 or something it's called. Um, I've probably, be, for being such a big fan of it, I should probably know that, um, the <laughs> planet name. But um, you're underwater for the entire thing. Loads of different biomes. But this one is, you've got a lot more, there's a few little bits of um, the game where you're on land, but they're not particularly, there's not much there. There's there's bits and bobs. And the on land stuff is, it doesn't feel as good as the underwater stuff. That's the only criticism really I have of the game, but it wasn't a major part of it either, so don't worry about it. Um, but this one has got a lot more on land. There's land vehicles as well. Um, the story is... I think it's like 10 years after the original story, so you've gone back to the planet to continue the original or to do additional research. Again, I haven't looked up too much. I'm just so excited about there being another Subnautica. I am <laughs> fanboying this to hell, you know? Yeah. I I should have used it as a selling game, Subnautica, because it's <laughs> such a wonderful, wonderful experience. And I just don't... If you like survival games in any way, shape, or form, go for it. If you like exploration games, go for it. Just buy it. 
It's <laughs> cheap now as well. It's really cheap. Sounds like we're doing what you're selling again. Oh, well, I should have kept it for selling, but oh, we've all bought we've it, both though. placed it. We've already played it. Mm. Sorry, we have, we have. I might <laughs> use it. I might use it. I'll just say, it. just refer back to episode sixty-nine. I can't be asked. Are you going to buy it? <laughs> <laughs> to just have the points for god's sake <laughs> oh that's that's another, that's another thing as well um so a couple of facts or a couple of things this is it's done by unknown world who are the same developers that originally did the original one they also did natural selection one and two okay. uh, which you may have heard of the first person um and third person in some respects um they kind of like team fortress you you build up a base um you've got team uh, You've got, like, in Natural Selection 2 is the only one I've played, but you've got aliens and plant alien things versus humans, and you all build up, like, defences, and you have to attack each other. And I can't remember the actual... It's a really good game. It's, re it's worth looking at. Um, uh, so, yeah, it's done by the, these, these same guys. It's they, they went into early access almost immediately after announcing it. They work really closely with the people who... They did the, that's why Subnautica, I think, is such a success, because it was... It was done with the community. They're in early access. I can play it now. I've bought it. It's sat there, but I haven't even installed it, and I won't install it until it's fully finished. Although I kind of want to help the devs, but at the same time, I don't want to spoil the <laughs> excitement and the, the experience. Um, it's currently at fifteen forty nine, but it'll be going up to about twenty quid, which again is nothing really um, for a thirty odd hour game. And hopefully, this will be a similar, you know, length. Uh, it's nothing to pay, considering the the joy I've got from it. Uh, PC and Mac initially going to come out on Steam and the Epic Store initially. Sorry, um, and the Discord Store, which I wasn't even aware that there was a Discord Store. Wait, uh, yeah, because yeah. I've got Nitro. I just realised there is. Yeah, I forgot. So it's something well, I learned. <laughs> well, um, there's no official release date. However, they have said that there'll be an early access for a year, and they came out in January. So we're thinking about it should be finished by January next year. Okay. They've, they've already got kind of the fundamentals. It's a Unity game, so they're probably just taking the old game, rebuilding the worlds, and adding some new features and stuff. Um, yeah, witted on enough about that fanboy and spuffed over that. You know, quick question about it though. So, with it being called Sub Zero, is there any sort of like I would assume there would be like ice shelves that you'd be under and stuff like that in it? So is again, that... I, I don't know that much about it, but I do know enough to say there's a lot more on land, so you are in uh, an ice okay. area. Okay. The original game was on this kind of volcano plateau, so you, the the edge of the world kind of dropped off. But I mean, it was massive, so you you know you very rarely yeah. went to it. And if you went to it, you ended up I'm not going to spoil it for you. That's one of the beautiful things about it. There's so many like little shocks, and there's yeah. so much tension built in the game as well. Um, so yeah, this one's on a nice plateau of some description on another area of the world, um, cool. and it's beautiful to play as well. It's and it's, the modding community is brilliant. It's just so good. I don't want to play it now. But Mom, can I have it for Christmas, please? I've got it, Mom. I've got it for Chris. Can you, can you give me Could a time you? machine? <laughs> I've got a question, Chris. Yeah. How, how much commission are you on from the devs? <laughs> I wish I was on more. There are actually some streamers. <laughs> there's, actually, more. there's actually some streamers that were, um, that were instrumental in its success. Because they kind of played it and they were like, oh my god, this is brilliant. They were as enthusiastic as I am now while playing it. I just wish I could... Exp it's one of them games I want to wipe my memory of entirely and start mm. again, you know? I think I watched one of the streamers that might have actually been involved in making that game a success. But I can't remember. It was a female. I can't remember her name, but she okay. used to play it a hell of a lot. But that's how I got into Subnautica. I've not played it a lot. <laughs> I have sort of... I, with survival games, it's one of those games, it's like a type of game where I have to be really in the mood to spend a lot of hours on it and usually it's either if it's single player paralleling with someone who's also playing the game, just we're over VoIP or we're actually in the game together so there's a, multi, a lot of it but... There's a multiplayer mod as well being built for the original Submartica at the moment um, it's apparently quite good but I haven't really played it with anybody um, Forgotten <laughs> Good <laughs> We've had enough. Yes, I'm right. sorry. Spaff over, spaff over. But get it. Oh, <laughs> right, clean God, yourself it's up. everywhere. <laughs> <laughs> Getting the vapors. Mercy. Right, so, on yeah. to the next section then. Hardware hot pants. Matt, Dan, take it away. So the we don't have too much this week. Um the big thing I found this week is that the PS4 lifetime sales have finally hit a hundred million consoles sold. So let's just have a little Yay. Good job, Bernie. Good job, PlayStation. But, however, there was a little fact about that. 
Um, the Switch is currently on something like 1.2 or 2 million, and it's the same, roughly the same, as what the PS4 was at that moment in its life cycle. So the Switch might actually be... Bearing in mind that the Wii blew every other console out of the out of, out of the water last... Gen, yeah. Gen, yeah. yeah. So the Switch might very well outdo it yet. Oh, I, I think it honestly could. I, I mean, the strength of the Wii was that anybody could play it. Like, your nan could pick it up and, you know, swing a tennis racket around and smash your expensive telly. Mm -hmm. And you do have a little <laughs> bit of that with the Switch. You know, you, anybody can pick it up. You know, you've got a Switch. Like, oh, do you want a quick game of Mario Kart while we wait for Danny to get out of the drunk tank again? You know, oh, yeah, let's have a, have a quick bash at that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Picking on me, are you? I'm not... I'm not... I'm not a Weatherspoons frequent, I'll have you know. Not, not anymore, they've banned you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, it's. I, I do genuinely think it would probably overtake the PS4 just because it seems like everybody... It's kind of the hot console, and I think it's moving in the right direction. It's giving everybody something to go for. But for the meantime, at least, you know, the, the PS4 is technically the fastest console to sell 100 million units, so they're still doing something right, and I think Sony's probably still going to keep doing things right when it comes to the home console market. But Does, Do these figures include the Pro and everything like that? It will do. I, be, I believe okay. I, any sort of permutation of the PlayStation of the 4. 4. Okay, fair enough. So yeah, the good for Sony. But the the big thing I kind of wanted to bring up this week was talking a little bit about Google Stadia or Stadia. We take so it full circle to that. <laughs> so I've not heard anything on this. I'm not really. I've heard a vague idea of what it is. But do you, do you guys? I'm assuming you guys know what's more. Google Stadia. Never heard of it. Ah, I'm I'm glad you asked, Chris. Let me tell you a little bit about Google Stadia. I'm going I'm going to pronounce it every possible way I can. Google Stadia. 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 <laughs> oh god how much commission are you on um 119 pounds <laughs> exactly exactly a month. No, right. no that's how much it costs <laughs> <laughs> so google start here quick brief it's basically google's streaming service for games so 119 quid will get you the starter sorry founders edition kit because everything is a founders edition these days which is basically the controller and a google chromecast ultra which is 4K, HDR, Ethernet, all the other stuff that you're probably not really that interested in. Didn't they kill the Chromecast? wasn't for you. Though? That was for Google. I'm sorry. That was, that was for Google, <laughs> not for you. Oh, it, it just looked like you were going like that to me, and I thought, like, am, I, <laughs> am I really that boring? Okay. <laughs> so basically, it's their streaming service. You find a game, stream it. You don't have to install it, as far as I know. It's basically them doing what a lot of companies have tried and failed to do already, which is enter the streaming market, but for games. It's so, Netflix for games. Essentially, yeah, it's Netflix for games. Although apparently they do have a free version. Well, they say free version. You've still got to pay 120 quid for the get the kit for it. But they have a free version that's got some games on it. But then you have the premium version, which has the good games on it. You know, it won't just be like 3D Solitaire or anything like that. <laughs> So, do you, do you want my opinion on this? Please. Right. It's going to fail. It's going to flop on its arse. Google have the infrastructure for this physically. They have the money for this, absolutely. But the actual sales model, the, the marketing model, is, is not yet. We're not ready for it yet. We're close to being ready for something like this. The problem we have is that we're paying £120 or whatever for the actual console or, and controllers. We then also have to pay for the service ongoing. So I don't know what it is exactly. Let's say 30 quid a month, right? Yeah. Then you have to pay for your games as well. And you're paying premium title, pre premium amounts for the games as well. I didn't know that you had to pay for the games as well. Yeah, they haven't been, they haven't been very vocal about that. And the games that you get on launch for free are very limited. The 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 games that are coming out in the future, they currently have you have to buy them, but they're coming out in the future as free to play. So they're actually doing a lot of marketing here that's not that's kind of under the covers. It's going to be an expensive way of playing games, and yes, it'll be convenient. I'm not too worried about the latency aspect, which is what most people are going on about, and what Google are using to try and sell it to gamers because all gamers are like, "What do you mean it's going to be?" 0.5 of a millisecond from me moving my thumb up to him moving on the screen. That's way too much. <clears throat> it isn't. It, yeah. I don't think the latency will be a problem, personally, unless you're in an area with really rubbish internet, which a lot of people in America are. A lot of people in 
Western, um, Eastern Europe are, we'll be okay. So screw you guys. Will we? <laughs> well, that's the <laughs> thing Enjoy. rural people want. Right. That's what I was thinking. And it, it does seem like it's the age-old argument of, oh, I need an internet connection to play my games. That's shit. Like, do you know what I mean? You can't just like, oh, I've got internet's out today. I'll just boot my PC up and play some local games and just have fun with it kind of thing. So that's a that's a problem I see with it. It's just always on, always connected. And it's just, if I don't think I like it, even they, though I play online most of the time. If they change their model to a subscription-based model where you pay for it up front and then you pay for the £30 a month subscription and you get free games with that, then it's going to work. Otherwise... What, how, how else do you think it's going to work? Every game that gets released goes on Google Stadia and you just get it as part of your subscription. That's madness. There's not, they're not going to be able to afford to do that with every developer ever, are they? They have no. to charge for the game. So sensibly, that has to be the model. It is the model, by the way, but if you think about it sensibly, that has to be the model that they work with. Unless they charge you based on a, I don't know, a tiered model where you pay £100 a month and you get all the games and you pay 30 quid and you get the the A games, and then you get triple A's if you turn 30, you know, I don't know. Will they not be able to do it so that you can get a discounted rate on, if you've got a subscription? That's the thing, they're not char They're not doing that. They're not giving okay. you a discount. You still have to pay the same rate as you would normally pay, and some in some places it's going to be more, because you'll be stuck to that platform, won't you? If you don't, if you decide to go Stadia instead of hardware next generation, because you're getting access to all of these, the same games, and you get some exclusives as well, which sometimes is why we, that's why I buy my Switch. Because I get exclusives on it that I don't get on other consoles. That's the only reason I buy it, apart from it is a brilliant console. But but Stadia, it, it's been sold as convenience. And it's not. We're not yet in a world where we need it that much, you know? I'd rather it's, have a handheld console like the Switch. It's yeah. not convenient, though, is it? If, if, if it's not going to run on 4G internet, which I kind of get the feeling it's going to struggle with 4G internet, then... You you still it's still not convenient. Like it, I, if it's something that I have to literally be sat at home, cabled into the router, then what? It, I think it will run on four G, but it'll be a, a reduced frame rate. Sorry, not reduced frame rate, reduced um, resolution, because there's different tiers, so you can get up to four K. Like people who are at home on hundred meg can play at four K, and you might I think there might be an additional price for that. I should have got some figures, some actual facts here instead of conjecturing, but. From what I've seen so far, the model is essentially they've got different tiers of payment based on the amount, the, the quality that you want. If you want 4K gaming at subpar millisecond response rates, uh, then you pay premium rates for it. But then you have to buy your games on top of it. So, yeah. But surely there's a break even point where if you. If you play the, do this for you know 12 months, that's £360 you're spending. You know, for three hundred and sixty pounds, you could get kind of a limited laptop or like an older generation gaming laptop, and that's going to be much better. You know, you can take that with you. You can plug that in, and honestly, I'd rather do that. Mm. I just, I just don't see it happening. I, I can't see it being a success. They might have some initial adopters. There'll be people who want to try it out, but I just don't see it being the I, I next just, thing. I, I I can't really get over the idea of paying £120 just to give it a go. It, it's the same problem that all hardware has at the moment. You know, there's that entry fee before you even try it out. And that's not something I'm willing to pay. I would rather stick to something I know and something I'm happy with. I, you know, if I'm on the go, I'll take my Switch. If I'm at home, I've got my PC, I've got a PlayStation 4. It, it's not... There's no real area I see it filling for me. Like, there's nothing I could see it doing that I can't do better, cheaper, and easier at home already. I mean, as much as I'd like to play games everywhere and every, you know, in every situation, I'd like to go to the doctor's office and play a game. I do occasionally do that with my Switch if I'm going to be waiting around for a while. But on the train, maybe playing a game on the way to work. I mean, while Excuse I'm driving me, down the M6, you know. <laughs> Don't knock it till you've tried it. <laughs> I need help, Doctor. I'm really sick at this game. <laughs> <laughs> what have you got? <laughs> i tell you what I got. I got good. <laughs> <laughs> yes, streaming games is something... 
I think it's one of them, isn't it? Like we're all hard. Like we we've all got hardware and we've played on hardware forever. For like maybe like the younger gen, could be something that they get into. Especially just being able to play 4K sounds quite appealing if you've got the internet to support it and the TV and the TV. But can you? Re- I mean, 4K TVs are commonplace and cheap enough now, aren't they? I, I suppose. Think it's, yeah. It's it sounds appealing, and if you've got the internet to support it, then I think it it saves a massive outlay on hardware like you know for for a 1080 ti back when it was like it's 800 pound for pc gamers yeah absolutely yeah. but we're not but, everyone's I mean, a pc gamer this is aimed at the console market uh, it's not aimed know, at us i know but at the same time as the consoles are they are they actually doing true native 4k they're not at the minute they? aren't they upscaling from 2k to i don't 4? know if any of them are capable of 4k I, are they no, none of them. I are didn't think so, and that's Next the thing. Gen, like, maybe. I suppose maybe that's me though, being just like really picky with it. If it's not native 4K, it's not fucking 4K kind of thing. But like, yeah, <laughs> it's just yeah. I'd, streaming streaming games for me, I, I don't know. I kind of just. I yeah, think it's interesting. Farther. I think it's like the Oculus Rift to me. It's there's or this generation of VR rather. They, at least they've done. They've made some really good strides in VR. Google as a company, I personally am trying to move away from anyway uh, these days. So that doesn't help my decision on this. I'm not getting one. It's simple as that. I don't feel like I'll be left behind. Um, The fact that Facebook bought Oculus did it for me as well on top of of the fact, even though it's one of my favorite game designers in the world is working, you know, he's the lead engineer on it. um, It's still, it's still, that whole these companies are needed to put the amount of money and investment behind these products and these new innovations but they're not ready yet for me to ad- i'm not an early adopter i am a stable adopter oculus uh, it's not just oculus this generation of vr isn't ready for my i don't the, the fidelity is not good enough yet it's not ready for my eyes they're my not eyes ready aren't. for my eyes yeah <laughs> my, they're <laughs> not, not worth it's not worthy my of my eyes, eyes. Not worthy. i don't want to look at your trash green door effect get out of it yeah exactly <laughs> If I, if I can't FPS. read yes, you're bollocks. <laughs> <laughs> if it's yeah. not true analog refresh rates, I'm not interested. <laughs> it's not like an FPV drone. Take it away. Yeah, if it's not injected directly into my skull as an implant, <laughs> I'm not interested. Right. Um, Don't give Mark Zuckerberg ideas because I'm sure he's considered it. It's coming. Lizardman. It's coming. Oh. I'm telling you. Yeah, the tech giants are doing pretty bad shit these days, but they're the only people who can drive innovation with the amount of money they have, and there's a problem in it. It's- but the issue is, where are they driving it? Are they they're driving it for themselves? Oh, I know exactly. The that's the pro, yeah. That's the, they're not. Yeah, they want to see what you're looking at in games and gathering data on that kind of shit. Do you know what I mean? It's just nuts it, to further target advertisements. And we'll go into a whole host of conspiracy shit here, but that's kind of how. Well, it, every, every that's the thing. Let me get, let me get some tin file ones. <laughs> every single, every single corporation out there, gaming corporation or, or any corporation, it's the bottom line that matters, and that's yeah. and that's the truth about it. It's not a tin hat foil hat scenario it is all about appeasing the stakeholders and making the most money you can appealing to the mass market appealing to the general public not appealing to people like us who are a little bit more let's say educated when it comes to gaming you know we've salty. been salty as well yes actually yeah actually <laughs> better than you yeah i, I can totally yeah I it's know. it's still it's still, I don't think, going to work. I, I'd almost bet money on it that I think it's going to be a flop. I think it's kind of the ultimate proof of concept. If Google can't make it work with their backbone, their infrastructure, everything else, then it's not ready. And that that's yeah. more what I'm kind of interested to see, just how far it goes. Are you going to get one? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Danny? That's what YouTube's for now. <laughs> so, at what point did you guys t- change your mind about how um, uh, about Steam and digital downloads instead of CDs and DVDs? It was for me. It was basically just like I, I mean, I used to buy games all the time, but I'd, I'd still get the no CD cracks just because I couldn't be bothered having like all these CDs to swap out. It was just easier. So when Steam kind of gave me that opportunity to just have everything and I just press play and that's it, it's easy. It Yeah, it made it so easy. I mean, I understand that technically like, I don't physically own the game. If if Steam, well, if ban Valve, you. yeah, something yeah like ban that. you, or, you know, if Gabe Newell just ran off with all the games somehow. <laughs> and his pile of weed. 
<laughs> Help Love Gavin that. find Love his cut. <laughs> it's mint. Mm. Yeah, they, they, they could close it down tomorrow, and then technically I've got nothing. But at the same time, it's have, I mean, games are. I hate to say, but as a media, it's kind of yeah, exactly. I've got six no, games like, back there. Six games. <laughs> Unreal <laughs> Tournament 2004. That'll do me. Yeah, That's six it. games. <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I, I'm fine with it. <laughs> I, I understand. I understand what they're doing, and yeah, it's, it's fine it, for the convenience. I'm fine with it. Yeah, I'll sit back and watch the world burn. No, not really. Um, but I, I think Google, if it doesn't work, Google will just be able to swallow it. They don't really give two monkeys, do they? They've got enough money to just swallow all the investment gone into it. Not going to really hurt their bottom line. They've got fingers in many pies. So, oh yeah, I don't. I'm I'm not worried about Google's bottom line. I'm just. Oh no, I'm not. I'm just, I just yeah. don't think it's going to. I don't think it's going to hit the right market because of the model that they put together because they're they're not wagering the right deals with the developers and they're not wagering the right deals with um with the people that are or, or, or rather putting the right deals together for the people who are going to be consuming it. If you gave me a ton of awesome free games like Xbox Live Pass, Xbox Pass or whatever it is, Game Pass, um or, or even PlayStation Now is that what it's called, the one on PlayStation, where you get some free games? PlayStation Plus, yeah. I think. Plus, yeah. yeah so yeah. there's now on Plus. But if you if you get Plus, you get a few free games. It's not as good value as Xbox Live, but it's still good. It, it, that would possibly appeal to me, possibly turn me to it. But even then, the money aspect isn't what I'm concerned about here. Not really. Right, shall we shut up? Yeah, we've, we've a, well we've and truly ran yeah. o- ran over today. So th- thank you for everybody who has <laughs> who's continued to listen. Hopefully, we've provided a bit more back and forth this week. And uh, yeah, so that is the end of the show. Thank you very much for listening to Resonance Arcade. You can watch all of our shows on youtube.com forward slash Resonance Arcade and visit our website at resonancearcade.com where you can find info about the show and links to all of our social channels. Very well put, Danny. You can follow us on Twitter at Resonance Arcade, where we publish show announcements and news. And finally, you should join us in Discord on discord.resonancearcade.com, where we hang out and discuss all things gaming. And usually we just post a lot of rubbish as well, because that's kind of what we're good at. Yeah, <laughs> and we will honestly be up to uh, posting things to Twitter at some point, you know, when Danny pulls his finger out and does things properly. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I forgot one time. Come on. Danny. I'm so, Danny. It's all my fault. <laughs> All oh, that's left God. is to say goodbye. Goodbye. Good riddance. Good riddance. Ta-ta. Ta-ta. <laughs> yeah. Goodbye.